Hi, I'm Jared. And I'm Brad. And this week on Hood Slappers, we're going to be reviewing the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Since the 1960s, Hyundai has come up with some very repulsive designs. The late 90s Accent, the early 2000s Sonata are just a few of their low points. But when Hyundai revamped their design philosophy to fluidic sculpture, their vehicles admittedly started looking better. Hyundai states the fluidic aspect of this design is drawn from nature. And since nature is made of curves and not sharp angles, the emphasis is on organic shapes and flowing lines. But what about this, the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz? Is this fluidic sculpture? Some might look at it and say, there was definitely fluid involved when it was designed. And others might be asking, is this a truck or an SUV? But let me put it like this. If the very idea of art is to draw on the thoughts and emotions of its connoisseurs, then maybe the designers at Hyundai are some of the best artists in the world. After all, it was Albert Camus who once said, a true masterpiece does not tell everything. And I have to respect Hyundai's designers for that. But today, I am the connoisseur, and I want to know, is this a truck? You see, even though the Santa Cruz resembles a pickup truck, let's be honest, this is not a pickup truck. In fact, I have no idea what this is. Indeed, Hyundai has created its very own segment for the Santa Cruz, and they're calling it the very first sport adventure vehicle, or SAV. And that raises two questions. Why can't other brands create their own segments of vehicles? Why build within the box that's already been created? And second, wasn't the Subaru Baja a SAV? At any rate, the vehicle is made, and it's our job to figure out exactly what a sport adventure vehicle really is, who it's made for, and is there a market for it? I have a confession to make. Oh, okay, what's that? I am actually a big fan of the Subaru Baja. And I'll say this, if any of our viewers out there have a Subaru Baja that they'd be looking to sell, I would be interested in purchasing it. You can contact us at info at hoodslappers.com. Just don't hold it against me. Don't be ashamed of me, okay? Well, listen, I drive a Toyota Corolla, Jared. So uh, according to the American Association of Automobile Pretentiousness, mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to hold anything against you because of what I drive. But I'll tell you this about this vehicle here. What I love about Hyundai and the Santa Cruz is that with this thing, I feel like what they did is they, they took all of these automobiles and just tore everything to pieces and then stuck something back together based on the things that they liked the most, like <laughs> SUV parts, truck parts, car parts, just stuck it all together. And you have this thing and it's so hard to define, but I absolutely love it. Uh, it's got a truck bed. Not only that though, 2.5 liter engine, it can tow up to 5,000 pounds. I mean, that's just mind boggling mm -hmm. to me. This thing really is like the $6 million man. Mm. I think it's important that we start with the rear because although the truck bed in the Santa Cruz is only four feet long, there's a lot of practicality beyond that. For example, with a click of the button on the key fob, I can lower the tailgate. Once that's lowered, I have easy access to my trunk. Now the trunk is fully waterproof, but if water does get in there from spilling something, I have a drain plug that I can easily access to let all the water come out of the vehicle. Now, some of you might be saying that trunk is way smaller than the Ridgelines, but that's because the Santa Cruz is way smaller than the Ridgeline. That's like saying the cargo space in a Mini is way smaller than a cargo space in the Toyota Sienna. The Santa Cruz also comes with a standard locking tonneau cover that's easy to retract and pull out. Ta-da. Hyundai says the tonneau cover can hold a very impressive 220 pound weight capacity. Allow me to demonstrate. Oh, J Jared, <laughs> wait, why, why don't I demonstrate? Why? Well, well, you know, it's just, I don't want you to ruin your shirt. So oh. allow me. Well, at least we know it can hold all of my 175 pounds. Here, let me try. No, 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 no. The tailgate on the Santa Cruz is also adjustable. 
you just move the latches to a different place and you have a roughly 45 degree angle. I just don't know what you would use this for. <laughs> Woo, yeah! 40. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> The Santa Cruz also has additional storage in these side pockets in the truck bed that comes with a 115 volt power outlet. Finally, the Santa Cruz also has these steps on both sides of the bumper, which allows you easy access to reach anything in the back and they can hold 440 pounds. Allow me to demonstrate. Brent, allow me. Hey, a Hot Wheel. The Santa Cruz's interior is nothing brand new. As we said, it is based off of the Tucson and with that, it brings an identical interior. This gives you a standard eight inch infotainment screen or you can upgrade to the frameless 10.25 inch screen with navigation. I do take issue with one thing, the space in the back seats. You see, Hyundai obviously had to make cuts to the back seat to make room for the truck bed, but it's just really not enough room. However, there is one bonus feature. Underneath the back seat is additional cargo space. Just lift it and there you have it. The Santa Cruz also has an available 10.25 inch fully digital gauge cluster. And that's gonna give you Hyundai's very cool blind spot information system. And that's gonna give you two cameras on your gauge cluster, not on your infotainment screen. And I like that, but you're also gonna get two separate cameras, one for the left side and one for the right. Another unique option with this model is the 64 different ambient lights that you can program. Nothing I'd ever use, but interesting nonetheless. Can I drive now? Brad, this is a very impressive uh, sport adventure vehicle. Or right. SAV, as Sav, they say, Sav. which I don't think will catch on, but no. let's be honest. No. But what boggles my mind is that this 2.5 liter engine can tow 5,000 pounds. You mentioned that earlier. But here's the thing. Now you can compare it to the Ridgeline because the Ridgeline tows 5,000 pounds. But where this takes the cake as well, this has more horsepower at 281, more torque at 311, and the fuel economy on this is 10.6. That is all better than the Ridgeline. See, and this is the thing, they're not even in the same class. No. So that's very impressive. And what is also impressive is the transmission mm. in this thing. Also very impressive. The vehicle gives you an eight speed dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters. And I must say it is very smooth, buttery. I think is the You're right. technical you know, term. Yeah, it is, is very buttery. Now with all the features and styling of this car and practicality, someone might think the price falls in somewhere around the low 40s. But I have good news for our viewers out there. The Santa Cruz starts at a very, very competitive 38,500. And that gets you a ton of stuff. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, but at the Ford Maverick, that's a lot less money, but that doesn't give you half the amount of things this vehicle does. And if I had to say, this is better looking as well, in my opinion. Interesting. Now you also get some interesting modes on this, which I love. So you got your usual, right? You got normal mode, mm -hmm. sport mode, you got smart mode, but I feel like they really get, particularly for us Canadians here in the snow, I feel like they're on to something here because they have these additional modes, Jared, that I love. Snow mode. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Driving snowy days, being in snow mode, mud mode. They've got sand mode, you know, for those crazy times you're driving on the I, beach. I can't tell you how many times I drive in the sand that I think, boy, if I could just hit the right. button. Gotta be honest, Jared, as I was doing my research for our shoot here, doing this video, this review, I, I took one look at the photo, I'm like, oh, that is ugly. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And then I showed up today and I like it. Like, like this could be it. This could be my next car. I, I, I mean, it's, it's I like it. It's interesting you say that because you also said the same thing about the Tucson, which this is the same idea as that. Right. The benefit is you have the trunk bed. See, I think something about Hyundai, Hyundai speaks to me a little Hyundai bit. Hyundai is maybe. speaking to you. What I like mm -hmm. 
is a lot of people, including me, have our, our, our noses down, thumbs down toward the pickup truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, I feel like, a pickup truck you can get away with. It's not over the top. It's not. And I do agree that when I first saw the photos of it, eh, yeah. it wasn't the greatest. But that that greenish, bluish color, what I don't even know what it's called. Hey, whatever. But this black really makes a vehicle yes. look cool. Yes, and normally I don't love black vehicles. I like it, but but the, this works. You have the black yeah. chrome on the front as well. It just all blends well. Yeah. If I were to purchase this vehicle, I would insist on getting it in black. In the black. I agree. Hyundai also has a cool feature in the Santa Cruz called the Highway Driving Assist. And it is basically what it sounds like. When I'm driving on the highway, it will match the speeds that you see on the posted signs. Now, how it does it? Through GPS and highway data. So it's very cool, but also what it does, if I'm coming up to a curve and I have my cruise control set, it's gonna slow the car down as it recognizes there's a curve ahead. Huh, huh. So again, we are one step closer to fully autonomous cars. And that is a neat step forward. Now there is a feature on this car that when I turn off my vehicle, it gives me an alert that, hey, check your back seat. Your kids might be in the back. Let's be honest, if I need an alert to tell me my kids are in the back, I probably shouldn't have kids <laughs> Wait, are you in serious? the first place. Yeah, absolutely. It will Turn say, off the car. Hey, get check your, your back seat. Well, I won't say check. Get, it won't say check your kids or get your kids, but it'll say check your back seat. It's implying, you know, if I leave a, a, a hockey stick back there, who, who cares? Why does a car right. care about right. that? Right. It's saying that because it's you know, don't forget your kids it's, back there. It's, it's like like, are are vehicles starting to address problems we don't actually have? <sighs> breathe in, breathe out. Oh, that could be another one. <laughs> I was breathing out the whole time. I didn't know I was supposed to breathe in. <laughs> Thank you, car. Oh, car, just everything. I think it would be great if you could have all of these driving aids or, or driving suggestions. You know, the guy in the fast lane who's driving 90 kilometers an hour when the speed limit's 100. Oh. It should have an alert. Yeah, oh. maybe, uh, maybe get over one, you know? Oh, Jared, you, I got to hand it to you. That is a great idea. That is a very good idea. Oh, and I just somebody saw hasn't. Now come up with that yet? I, someone just did. Because <laughs> That's me. Because that is a big problem. Huge problem. Okay, now Jared, mm. <laughs> Gary, our social media guy yeah. here at Hood Slappers, yeah. he had something very important to tell me. What's that? Oh, uh, okay. Get ready for this because this is going to change the nature of our relationship. He said on one, on one, <laughs> on on one of our YouTube videos, somebody started the hashtag, let Brad drive. Let Brad drive. Let Brad drive. Hashtag, let Brad drive. Obviously, I haven't seen it yet, because... You Gary, haven't... Gary didn't tell you. Gary didn't tell me anything. I told Gary to make sure he told you. Gary didn't... I haven't even spoke to Gary <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> well... You, oh, he'll have something to say to you. I'm going to call Gary tonight. Call Gary. Because somebody left Let Brad Drive hashtag. And quite frankly, viewers, if we could get that going a bit more. Because I think what the people are trying to say, Jared, mm. is that they would feel more comfortable with their viewing experience with me and the drivers. Now, why would they feel more comfortable doing that? Look at me. Look at that. That's, I, that's I mean, why I'm asking. <laughs> I, I'm looking at you and I'm asking uh, myself, why would wh that? What about me does not convey comfort, safety? That Carnegie does convey comfort. I'll say that. Okay, all right. See? Okay. All right. All right. So, folks, if we could get a little hashtag love for Let Brad Drive, that what would it take? How much? What would it take? How many hashtags before you let me drive? How many hashtags before I let you drive? Yeah. Ten. Ten. And not all from the same person. <laughs> all right. Ten, Ten different separate, separate drives. Yeah. Yeah. Friends, help me out. Uh, you don't want to see me in that. This is a very comfortable seat. Why haven't I driven? The driver's seat, I always find more comfortable than the passenger seat. Well, there's no doubt about it. I have it's... places to put my hands. It is nice up here. So, 10 hashtags. 10 hashtags. I get to drive next Let car. Let Brad drive. And then... For the whole time. Yeah. I'll pick the car we review for that oh, day, yeah, <laughs> but, you but you can drive it. 
I as long as you like. I have like. a feeling it'll be a new Corolla, eh? How's it feel, Brad? Oh, my. The word Hyundai translated means modern times, and I think the Santa Cruz is a perfect example of that. It may be as unique as the segment that was made up for it, but it really is a vehicle for anyone. It has all the, the features and ability of an SUV, but with the added bonus of a truck bed and the ability to produce power and towing when needed. This vehicle is astonishingly practical. And with that, I give the all new 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz my hood slap of approval. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.